since I've been on this kick of German radios lately, I discovered I had this in the garage and I had forgotten about it. This is actually like a little micro mini uh, Grundig AM FM table radio. It's really small. There's a soldering iron behind it. You can see for scale there how big it is. And it's pretty sad that somebody painted this thing white. It looks like it has a brown plastic or bake-like cabinet which would make it look like uh, the bigger wood models. The front plate is glass. It's a model 85 slash USA. It's a tube chart. It's got four tubes pretty amazing that they could get uh, AM FM radio out of four tubes. This is just a little bit of a show and tell. We're going to do a little quick repair on this thing. One, basically one capacitor. I just powered it up. Um, Products for babies and young kids that contain the pain reliever benzocaine. It's because uh, that can cause a serious blood disorder in small children. Pediatrician Daniel Gangian with Providence St. John's Health Center in Santa Monica tells KNX parents should take a more natural approach to teething. For example, using cold teethers and putting them in the refrigerator. I always love to feed my toddler infant benzocaine. Sounds like something you'd clean the flux off of a circuit board with. Cloth soaked in cold water because it can also relieve pain. He recommends parents avoid giving babies medication unless a doctor gives the okay. Strawberry Daniels lawyer. Anyway, this thing is all the same quality as the big wood model. Seen presidential election. Six hundred one four. The church like on The great Kundoska The way he feels when we Just taking a look at the inside, it is a power transformer set. The output tube is a 6BM8. Uh, I'm not sure what... These are all multi-section tubes, so you can see it's only three, three tubes set. I couldn't find a schematic on this. It's not listed in the SAMs. So I need to, I need to glue the antenna down. And the 6BM8 is getting extremely hot. This is getting extremely hot. So I'm going to assume that the coupling capacitor is leaky. So let's check that. A leaky coupling capacitor will destroy a tube in very short order depending on how bad it's leaking. And you can't tell by listening to it. You're not going to hear hum or distortion. It's just going to burn the tube up. That's connected to the cathode of the out, audio output tube, and it's reading about 16 volts. That's a little bit on the high side. It should be around, I would say, 8 to 10. Okay, I believe that one right there is the uh, coupling capacitor. That's what couples the audio to the grid of the output tube. So that comes off. This tube has both the audio preamp and the audio output in it. It's a dual section tube. And it has 5 volts on it, which would indicate that that little brown ERO 100, it looks like 2,200 picofarads is leaking. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clip this thing out of here. And, um, 
Let's see if there's any difference. I got 5.8 volts there now. Well, it went to zero volts and you can hear the audio woke up a little bit. So let's go on to You can see the DC leakage through the capacitor there. It's not shorted, but it's leaky. And the leakage will destroy that tube. Well, let's measure this guy here and see what the, the cathode voltage dropped down to. Dropped down to 13 volts. Just still a little bit on the high side. Uh, it's possible that the tube was damaged already. And I wonder how many more of these are leaky. Some of these German radios, the capacitors leak, and other ones they don't. It just depends on who the supplier was. This one here is leaky too. Um... 95 volts leakage to that one. I know the meter's 10 megs, but still, tube equipment's high impedance, so that one's got to go. Okay, I'm on my oldie station. I had to glue the antenna down there. One of those rubber things broke and solder one of the wires back on. I AM sensitivity's still real weak. the place where the event is happening. Kind of quiet. It doesn't have a whole bunch of gain. Um, works a lot better, though, with those capacitors in there. Probably because the B-plus is higher because it's not loading it down with the tube being biased on. Um, doesn't quite have the fidelity of the bigger ones, but it's pretty good. And uh, who knows how damaged that tube is from the prior owner i have no idea how much this was run i don't even remember coming into possession of this anyway uh i gotta clean the rest of this paint off i've kind of just been scraping it off um i need to find something that'll scrape it off or remove it without damaging the plastic cabinet so Do a little bit, little bit of documentation for myself here for when the uh, dial cord breaks. It looks like it's only got one turn, and then it's got. Oh, you don't like the phone, huh? Let me see. Let me look at this. Okay, it's got two turns around the tuning shaft. It's pretty straightforward. It just goes down there and loops around. And it looks like it comes back, so... Yeah, real simple dial cord. Wow, look at the IF is 468. Actually, it sounds very good. It has a lot up, a lot more high-end than an... I don't mind coming here Wasting all my time has a lot more high end than a US made radio like always. It's not the 
So these ERO 100, whatever those are, they must be paper. They're all both leaky. There were only two of these in the radio. I checked the rest of them leaky. And I tend to prioritize the replacement of these leaky papers now before electrolytics. I brought a lot of radios back to life. And I've had way more of these short and do damage than I have electrolytics. I know the internet likes to tell everybody that electrolytics have to be changed first. But I'll tell you from my experience, real world experience, these papers cause a lot more problems. The electrolytics usually just go open and the thing hums. They can short, but they usually just go open and it hums. These, they don't go open, they always short.